Welcome, everybody. My name is Jay Bassell, and I am joined, even though it says Vanessa Nilsson, I am joined by Jeff Baxter. Jeff Baxter is the man in the screen standing in front of those two amazing Epson F3070 DTG printers. And we're really excited to be able to present some new information today. Today's session is all about the production pod and workflow automation. So for us, this is the culmination of a lot of work and we're excited to share what we know and we're excited to begin this webinar. Jeff, how are you doing in New Jersey? I'm doing great today, Jay, how are you doing? I'm great, I'm excited, you know me, I get jacked up for these things. It's a, it's a process of a lot of behind the scenes work, but when we can pull it off and share some of this great content and important information, I think we're, uh, we're not only doing our industry a service, um, but it feels good, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, I, I agree that I'm, I'm pretty excited about this, too, because I think this is a really interesting and very uh, uh, important topic we're going to talk about today. Everybody seems to have a lot of interest in it. It's something that I've been trying to put together for actually for several years at different places. So I'm, I think it's a very exciting time. Well, it's a big reason of why Jeff Baxter, my new my new best friend in all things automation and workflow, uh, it's a big reason. It's a big part of why you're here. And so we're, we're, we, we should just jump right in because we're going to show today how we're going to use and position the Epson F3070, this new DTG printer in operation. Now, of course, we're not going to go too deep or too far, but we wanted to create a simulated production environment and specifically give you some time and some room to show some new software and an actual application whereby we can use barcode automation and the new Equipment Zone RIP, we call it Easy RIP, but Equipment Zone's new RIP software. So Jeff, I am uh, pretty fired up because based on what you've already shown me behind the scenes, um, we're now poised, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we are now positioned to help people profitably print up to 100 shirts per hour if they had those two printers behind you. Is that correct? Absolutely. In fact, you know, I think I'll correct you a little bit because I think we could go over 100. It's not just up to 100. I think 100 <laughs> is a really, really easy average on these two printers. Um, and, and then when we add, you know, the, the new RIP and the barcode automation, you know, we can probably even go higher. I, in fact, we want to, in the next few weeks, set it up and actually try to run 100 shirts and see how long it takes us to do that. But I can pretty much guarantee on the two machines, it's going to be well under 60 minutes. So it, it's really, uh, you know, a, a great way to take advantage of these great machines and kind of take it to the next level from a productivity standpoint. That's outstanding. And, and it's exciting because, like you said, we've been working for this day and for this, you know, to, to reach this milestone for quite a while. And so um, there's a lot of moving parts going on behind you. So I, I want to give a, a, a quick shout out to everybody who's attending and thank them for being here. The session is being recorded. Uh, and we will be doing more or future webinars where we'll be able to go in a little deeper. Um, Jeff and I today may not be able to address every single question that you have, but you're welcome to drop in some comments or question in the chat. And uh, it, it, it does not mean that we're ignoring you if we don't immediately respond to you. Um, but it'll also give myself or Jeff or someone on our team a chance to follow up with you maybe after the webinar. So it's okay that you use the chat, please do. Um, but just know that we may not be able to to, uh, to answer every single uh, question. So, so Jeff, let me start the, the the webinar this way and set the stage this way. You're, you've you've helped me understand what we mean or what we think we mean when we say a production pod. But maybe you could dive in on that a little bit. Maybe you could tell us, you know, define that for us. What does what does that mean exactly? Maybe what are the benefits? Well, Jay, basically what we're looking to do is, is optimize our throughput or our, our yield in our printing facility. So what we've, let, what we've taken here is we've set up two F3070s, each machine easily capable of doing about 50 to 60 shirts an hour um, in conjunction with a dryer and a pretreat machine. And, and we found that one operator can very easily run the two machines. Now, pretreat's a separate workflow function, in my opinion. So I would usually do that before I even bring the shirts into the print. Okay, floor. good but, point, good point. So let's let everybody know that, imagine a stack of already pretreated shirts sitting next to you. We've already taken care of that. So shirts are ready to go, and, and, and pretreatment is a big part of this, and it has to be done separately. Um, but once you're here, uh, by utilizing the new, we've got a RIP and, and Garment Creator, in my opinion, is a great program. But we've added the new RIP, which takes you to some additional levels, gives you some additional controls over things. Um, and then also allows us to, to set up our barcode scanning system. Um, so basically, one operator 
can, at least in the print shop, run two machines, easily print 100 shirts an hour, um, and the barcode just takes it to a new level that does a lot of really cool things with it. So Jeff, um, you, you talked a little bit about the need for a speed treater. We also typically don't go too deep into it, but sitting on the other side of you is a conveyor belt dryer. And I think that would be a, another key component to this production pod. Is that true? Absolutely. And it's, you know, with, without it, uh, this really does, isn't functional because if you were to do 100 shirts an hour, or even 50 shirts an hour uh, on, on one F3070, you would not be able to keep up with that with a, with a heat transfer setup, or with a heat press setup. You know, unless you had maybe 10 of them and 10 people running back. <laughs> yeah. so, to my opinion, it's kind of like buying a brand new Ferrari and putting a 20 mile an hour governor on it. It, it, it doesn't, you know, you don't enjoy the benefits of what you've just purchased. So um, it does require a belt dryer. The Epson inks work beautifully in the belt dryer, which historically some DTG inks didn't work very well in, in, a, in a conveyor dryer system. You know, they needed some pressure to bond them into the garment. Uh, but these inks work great. Um, it's easy to work with. And it's the only way really to, to optimize the productivity in a situation like this. So you need the belt dryer, you need the two, one or two printers. With the two, you can easily realize 100 shirts an hour. Um, and with some of the companies I've worked for in the past, you know, that, that level of productivity would cost you in excess of a half a million dollars. Wow. With the two printers, we're looking at about $100,000 here. So I, it- I, I love the fact that you did not mention names. But I think by the price point that you shared, we know who you're talking about. And that's fair enough. We'll leave that over there. We'll leave that. We're not here to disparage others, but we're excited about what's possible and the breakthrough that Epson has given us. And so I can tell that you're excited because you've been here. You've, you've walked the walk for many, many years and watching this technology advance. So genuinely tell me, I know this is off script a little bit, but how excited are you standing in front of those two machines kind of at the, at the pinnacle now? Um, you know, I, I think it's it's kind of the missing link because we've always had DTG that was either incredibly expensive and relatively productive, or we've had DTG that printed beautiful shirts, but really wasn't very productive. You know, a business model supported on a few shirts for a lot of printers, especially if you're trying to contract print or something like that. Right. It's very difficult to, to, to use a DTG system for that. But this not only allows you to do those things, be productive. Um, fit nicely into the screen printing world, which is where volume's always been done. Um, and not to replace screen printing, it augments screen printing. Um, but everybody has the ability to print a lot of things that, that just wouldn't be screen printable, uh, wouldn't make sense to screen print, um, and do it in volume and in a fashion that actually supports a business model that makes money. So I love that. I love that, that you're focused on production and that you've got your eye keen to that, which is why we are here today and some of the new developments in addition to the F3070, which has been out for approximately a year now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the fact of the matter is, is that we've been trying to figure and sort and gain some momentum. So you brought up a comparison. So maybe we can touch on this just briefly. You said that, you know, Garment Creator, which is the would, would you would you call it a RIP software or how would you? Garment Creator, regardless of what you call it, is a RIP software. It processes the file, RIPs it, which is register image processing, and, and then creates a file that the printer can read. It's a really nice one. You know, I've worked with a lot of them, especially the ones that come with the equipment, and I don't think there's anything close to it at any price. I mean, it's great to work with. Um, it, it's very intuitive. It's a, it's a you know, grab it, move around type of GUI. It's, it's exactly how you work in the real world. So it's really easy to work with. And I, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But when you want to go to that next level, you want to add automation. You want to have more color control. Um, one of the things our RIP does, if you don't mind, I'll just go through the RIP real quick. Yes, please do. That's what my next question was. We'll help, help people understand the difference. Because if we have the easy RIP Pro now, maybe you could talk about some of those differences and how it separates away from Garment Creator. Well, what it does is it gives you a higher level of control over your color profiling. So when you get into some of your, your fine vignettes or your, uh, your neutral grades, or your flesh tones, it does give you a much higher level of control over the profile. So that's a beautiful thing. In fact, with a, a, an outside module can actually be individually profiled with customers, a, a, a pretty laborious task. I wouldn't suggest everybody dive into that. And it, it's really well profiled the way it is. In addition, because of the way the algorithms are written for this, it can save you a bunch of money, especially on darker shirts, because it creates a white underbase that uses a minimal amount of white. And I've, I've had arguments lately with people who say, you know, oh, a rip's a rip. It doesn't make any difference. But that, that's not true. OK, OK, um, OK. Full disclosure, Jeff. One of those arguments was with me and you did an awesome job of educating me. And, and I got to be I got to be honest, I will be who I am. I wasn't as informed and didn't understand 
some of the principles. So thank you for schooling me and giving me a re-education in, in how those color profiles work and how it actually does reduce the ink costs. It, it, it reduces, especially on dark garments. You're not gonna see near the benefit on a CMYK print, but as soon as you add white to it, um, normal rips approach the, the generation of that white underbase in a slightly different fashion. And what we're doing is maximizing the amount of garment we're allowing to show through. And that can be done in several different ways. And if anybody wants to talk about this, I'm not gonna bore you to tears on, on color theory at the moment. Feel free to email me and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll talk to you off on, on color theory and, and color reproduction. But basically it's a way of using a GCR type separation versus a UCR which I'm not gonna get into, but what it does then is maximize that garment color. So by doing that, you're reducing your, your, uh, your white uh, ink consumption, price goes down and it can go down dramatically. I've seen a number of shirts where I've been able to print it using a, a, the standard onboard rip, maybe a dollar, drop it down to 60 to 65 cents. So it's as much as 35 to 40% reduction in some situations. It's not gonna be everything. Correct. So Colors in the design, it's going to depend on uh, the amount of white underbase that's needed and, and so forth. But it can it can have a dramatic impact on the cost per print or the CPP of each of the prints. I love that. Jeff, I just want, just want to jump in for a second. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to make sure all of our listeners and viewers and anybody watching this after the fact understands that the, the Equipment Zone RIP program is new. It is not yet available. It is not yet on our website. So we've already had people asking about pricing. Where can we get more information? That's all pending very soon, very soon. Like we are within, within days for sure. So I just want to make that clear. I also want to make sure that people understand we're not going to take a deep dive today but we are going to show it and, and we're going to set up future webinars where we are able to go in and, and, and really have you, uh, <laughs> the master educator on color theory, to, uh, to share that knowledge with us. So we'll, we'll look forward to that in future webinars. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but back to our uh, regularly scheduled program with, with Jeff Baxter. Um, tell us, is there any other big comparison with the RIP software? Sh should, should we know, like, where did this come from, Jeff? Where did, this, where did the RIP software... What are the well, roots? Well, I've, I've been in this business a really long time. In fact, I'm not gonna even tell you how long because it's a little embarrassing, but over the last 10 or 15 years, I've had a chance to work on a number of, of projects. I was with m and I was with Cornet. So I've, I've worked on a lot of different digital processing uh, pro projects. And I got very close with the guys at Cathari. Um, and Cathari Infotech, in my, in my opinion, builds by far the best rip. So they've customized, and this is powered by a Cathari rip with our own uh, settings and some other things put into it. So we've worked very close with them to add a lot of things that aren't available on the standard RIP, but it is powered by Kathari is how we'd like to put it. Um, and I think they are better at color reproduction than anybody in the DTG industry, hands down. So that's where this has come from. And then in order to use our workflow automation, it requires our RIP because it is also a very customized program that nobody else has that, that the two speak to one another. So the, the files are created properly in, in uh, Easy RIP Pro and then go right to the automation pro software that we have. Okay, and that's something that we're definitely going to show. So I know we've been talking here now for about 14 minutes and people are like anxious to see this. Um, is there anything else that you want to talk about as it relates to a benefit of, of the systems working together? Because it, it, it almost sounds like we're talking about two software programs. We're talking about a new RIP software and then we're talking about an automation workflow piece. Did I understand that correctly? Absolutely. You, you know, anybody can run the, the, the RIP and realize benefits from it. There's no question. But for somebody who is setting up and running multiple units and they want to optimize their, their workflow within the printing facility, that's where the, the, scan, the barcode scanning workflow system comes into place. Okay. I've heard this a lot. It's interesting. Over the last five or six years, you know, barcode and workflow optimization have become very hot buzzwords in the industry. And I did a lot of, you know, trade shows. People would constantly walk up and go, yeah, but can we use a barcode system with this? You know, a barcode system really doesn't do anything. It's an entry system. So to say, yes, I, I, need to know, I needed to know what the end result they were looking for was. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you want it to, do you want it to order breakfast? Do you want it to, you know, <laughs> what would you like for this barcode to do? I would like tacos really, for the record. I would like to order a couple of tacos. I mean, why does that not surprise me? Yeah? <laughs> but, uh, but it, it um, you know, it's just an ASCII type entry system. You're using a barcode to enter type, I can go to the same thing and type it in and it works, but not in near the time frame. So what we've done is we've kind of gone back and forth. And, and I want to talk about barcoding just a little bit, because there are a lot of different ways to approach this. And I've learned far more than I ever wanted to in about the last six months of this. So um, I think barcode systems break down into one of two different categories. 
One is a, you know, the, the web to print version, which is all knowing, all telling. It starts at your Shopify store or your order entry department and goes all the way through, tracks it. You can, by, by scanning that code, I can tell if it's been pre-treated, I can tell if it's been pulled, if it's inventory, it's not an inventory. If it's a press, if it's been printed, and then all the way through to where it prints a, a, um, a shipping label, a packing slip, and tells you it's going out the back door and supplies the, the, uh, the tracking number. That's not exactly what we have here. And one of the downsides I found with that is that everybody's setup is different depending on your ERP systems and your, on your Shopify or your internal systems, those all have to be customized and they require an IT department and they require an enormous amount of effort to get them up and running. They're very cool and we can do that. We have software that will do that, but it's very expensive and it's very time consuming. So what we wanted to do was optimize the workflow without all of that. And so on the opposite side is what we've come up with here that doesn't require inter interfacing with the ERP or with anything else. So the way we have this set up is you can go uh, have, say, have your art department will set up your files, pre-rip them, and they go into a, to a hot folder. We then have a database that's set up in Excel, which I'll show you in a few minutes. It's very simple uh, with only three components, which is basically the path to that piece of artwork and the identifier or name. And that name can be anything you want it to be. It can be a SKU number. You can call it Tom if you want to. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever identifies that specific piece of artwork. We then can create, and there's different ways to do it, but we can create a different um, um, barcode for each one. And those can create, and, and everybody says, well, then how do I create the barcode? And that's a really good question because they're very specific. Right, there's, right. Lots of, there's lots of different types of barcodes. And we're using what's called a 128, which is pretty much what you'd see at the grocery store when you go to, to check out on your self-checkout section. Uh, it's not a QR code, and, and we do use a 128, but there's very specific information, which is the type of the name of that identifier, which then takes you back to the path and will load that file almost instantly. So it makes it very quick, and it has some great advantages out here. It takes any decision making off the print floor. That's done in the art department. They're going to tell it, you know, just basically they rip the file for the color of shirt it wants to print on, you know, the, the level of quality that they want to print. Uh, size and placement, essentially. And that's all encrypted in the, in the RIP file. You save that file, it's in a folder. So when I scan, it looks back, grabs that RIP, loads it, which takes literally seconds. And then you hit the button, it starts to print. One other thing that I, in talking to a couple of customers this week, I realized is that it, I think it'll help immensely with misprints because it's real easy with any of these machines to get maybe a couple files in the queue or to hit the wrong button or to maybe size it wrong. If the data is correct on the barcode, as soon as I scan it, I can't get incorrect information. Whatever I've scanned goes right to the machine. Gotcha. Now, I've seen a few other experimental systems that require a computer on every one of your printers. I so. was just going to ask you that. So, to, I, I, because I have seen a few of the other people who have worked on this, and that's exactly how they set it up. Like a little laptop was sitting on every unit. I've seen either a laptop or I've seen some experimental systems that had a Raspberry Pi at each machine, but, but it did require a, a CPU of some sort mounted each machine to process this barcode data. And I think we've come up with a really slick idea here in that we're only using one computer and one database, but each of our machines has a barcode attached to it so that I can have 20 of these in a row. I, as I walk up to the machine, I scan the barcode that identifies this is the machine I wanna load my data to. And then I scan my shirt and that pulls up the specific graphic that's on that shirt. Now, these barcodes can be put on the work order. They can be put on individual shirts. Um, so, you know, if I know I'm going to run 10 of them, I can just run it up, run the same one straight through off, off of, of a work order or on a specific shirt. That way I can have a stack of 100 different shirts and different designs, and it will print the correct design on each one. So it makes it really quick. It takes all the decision making out of the hands of the, the press operators and allows them to do what they do best, which is make you money. These machines only make money if they're printing. All the other things you're doing cost you money. So during that time that you're ripping files, setting up files, do that offline. Let the printers print, and this allows them to do that. They love that. Of the time. I love so. that. Well, let me see if I can summarize a few things before we have you go over to the workstation and actually share your screen and show us the software. So it sounds like if I heard everything correctly, Easy Rip Pro is a standalone software and there were four things that we should know about it. Number one, it's going to help us with color correctness and be more accurate. Number two, it's going to decrease potentially the cost as it prepares under basis, specifically white ink on dark garments. 
Number three, which we didn't touch on, and I'm going to tease everybody, but it allows us to create DTF direct to film transfers on the same machines within three clicks. We're going to save that and tease you and show you a little bit on another. You can, we actually actually just recently posted something on our YouTube channel, so you can go check that out. But also the fourth thing, which you went into a little bit deeper than I expected, but I loved every second of it, was the barcode, the barcode workflow automation. So, and then correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, you would have to have the Easy Rip Pro software. And then as an option, you could option up for the Easy Workflow software. Is that correct? Absolutely. So Rip will run by itself. Workflow requires the Rip to do that. So okay. you have to have the code packages to add the automation package to the, to the program. All right. Um, I'd like to a quick sample just to show you how it works here real quick. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a good to highlight better. The program. So I'm going to come right that. back. I know everybody's anxious to do that and not watch me. <laughs> So for those of you who are still attended and, and, and tuned in, thank you again. Uh, this is exciting stuff for us. Jeff's going to be back on screen here for a minute, and then we'll switch over and let him uh, see the software. So. so we've got one zebra scanner. Basically, what I'm going to come up to, I'm going to scan the machine. That now says, this is the machine I want to print to. That's the image I want. So previously, you had already said this file goes with this one, this file goes with that one. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's not on the right place. Hang on a second. Oh. I lost my connection. We've lost a little technical <laughs> snafu here. Hey, it wouldn't be real if we didn't have a, a, little, a little hiccup here. We're running this program and the, the Zoom on the same computer. Oh, okay. And so it's having a hard, <clears throat> a hard time finding it. Yeah, I don't, we, we was working perfect just a second ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> we'll get there. Give it another shot. Okay. All right, so for those of you tuned in, one of the things that we'll definitely do, I, I, I added this information into the chat, but it was a great suggestion and we actually already had a plan for it. We will have a webinar coming up where we're gonna do some side-by-side -side comparisons of the same file in Garment Creator and then in the Easy Rip Pro software. So I think that'll be really interesting and also very um, educational to see the variations and see the differences and then compare the final prints on the same printer. So the only variable that would be different will actually be the RIP software. We'll be pre-treating them exactly the same. We will also be printing them on the same printers. They will be the exact same graphic. No modifications will be made other than the RIP software. And then you'll also see the calculations You'll see the final pricing and then you can see a wow because i've already seen it and i'm pretty skeptical to be uh straightforward with everybody not that i don't believe it's possible but i just i'm like you i want to see it i want to see it for myself so that is in the works and we're pretty excited about that but today we're close to this right jeff how are we doing are we getting close to having this fixed up and yeah it's it's um hang on your two seconds all right We'll give you we'll give you four or five more seconds. How about that? Good. It wouldn't be an equipment zone webinar if we didn't have a little glitch here or there. My friends call them gremlins. The gremlins have arrived. Yeah, with I can't get it to work with the uh, team viewer open at the same time. I'm sorry. We usually run them on two separate computers. And uh, unfortunately, I screwed up. I got TVR running at the same time on this. I'll, I'll have it going. Maybe we'll come back to this in a minute. So I thought maybe we'll do a, well, we've got the TVR open on there. We can go ahead and do a. Um, um, Actually show the software. Maybe you can. Yeah, thank, thank you. I've, I'm a bit befuddled here. So no, no, that's okay. We can go then reverse. So we're going to flip flop. Sure. You're going to go. I'll walk you through it and then we'll come back to this in just okay, a second. Okay, perfect. That's okay. We're, we're flexible. We're waiting. We're happy. Um, and thank you for the comments, by the way, in the chat. Uh, as I previously said, there have been some people asking questions. Um, we're focused here today on this. We are recording this 
and the questions in the chat, we will be able to follow up with you after the fact. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the comments. Um, and Jeff's going to take over. Jeff, I've already given you the ability to share your screen. So you've got control anytime you're ready. Okay, I think we're sharing. Can you see that yep. okay? Well, I can see uh, it. It's perfect. I'm viewing your great. screen. So basically, this is the rip. So we can come in here and these are the automation windows. I'll get those out of the way. So um, you can pick a file. So we'll go in here to uh, F3070 prints, which are my favorites here. Uh, Let's just pick something, skin tones is a good one. So this is a great print, it works really nicely. So it's got tons of prints. And this one I find, a couple of things you're gonna find with the rip is that if you look at the really fine areas, the vignettes that fade out to nothing, mm -hmm. really nice job on that where we go from, from something to black. Um, and there's no chop off, there's no stair stepping. It works extremely well on that. And then um, it has the capacity to, reproduce these neutral grays and these flesh tones, which are, this print's probably one of the hardest ones I've printed because you've got a variation in flesh tones, which are, uh, they're tertiary colors, they're hard to reproduce, and, and they're what are called memory colors. And, you know, it, it, memory colors means if I print a picture of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, nobody here on the, on the, uh, the program really has an idea what, uh, what it looks like. So I can do anything from brown to yellow to purple. But right. when I have them in a flesh tone, um, you know, if it goes green shade, you know that it's either off or <laughs> that person's had a, had a bad tuna fish sandwich for lunch. So um, this really does a beautiful job reproducing this. So you can see we can set this all up. These are our automation windows over here. So all we would do is tell it we want to print the file, get it to print, and it will take it out. Um, once we open these, these basically are set up. We can see we've got two different F3070s. When we scan, it will then fill this data right here and, and take off with it and tell it to print. So really easy to work with, um, very simple, and just um, gives you a lot of, a lot of uh, capacity and a lot of options that you just wouldn't have otherwise. Would you suggest that each of those windows to the right would be one of the printers, correct? Would you name them or number them, or what would you suggest? Well, Maybe these I'm... actually are. I don't know if you can see it here, but this is F3070 number one. Oh, gotcha. Number two. Um, and what, what happens when it's set up correctly, and I don't have Zoom running at the same time, is as soon as I scan the printer, it identifies and it assigns it the art to one of these two boxes. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's what you were doing before. Yes. So, absolutely. So, um, and it just because I've got Zoom and, and this on the same computer, this has to be the only thing running on at the time for it to, to operate properly. So I apologize for that. But um, we've got videos set up and it works amazingly well. So. You can actually go in and control things. You can do print adjustments. One of the things I was going to show here too, um, Jay had talked a little bit about, um, let's go to home, let's go to windows, on panels. The Q-Ripple lets us see kind of everything that's going on here. And Q-Rip's right here now. So, oh, J picture in the corner, there we go. So we can see our sizes, we can resize here. But I was gonna show you just really quick, when we come in here and we go to print, printer properties, and we go to device options, one thing you can see here is the F3070 is normally a one pass machine, meaning it prints the white and the CMYK within a single pass. Correct. And Obviously that if we decide we want to play with DTF, that's not an option because we have to be able to reverse our print order. So if we were to turn this off, now it becomes a two pass printer, meaning it prints CMYK and then prints white. But we also have the option when we go back to uh, reverse the print order over here too. So what we can do is actually tell it, um, instead of printing uh, what we tell it one pass and then we tell it to print uh, color first and then the white. And so that's a really easy way to be able to produce um, the transfers, which there is no, you know, there's no way to do that. You, know, you see right here, first white, then color, we would go to first color and then white. Gotcha. So, and we won't get into that at length, but I think not that I would ever tell you that you should buy a 3070 to print just DTF, but it's a great option if you have one and you get some polyester shirts in or some difficult fabrics or things that don't print well. Um, it's a real quick, easy way to produce your DTF. 
um, and, and have one machine that kind of can cover all those bases for you, especially when difficult things show up in the shop. That makes a ton of sense. I've even had clients say who have multiple machines that during some of their downtime, they'll have one machine set up so that they can do DTF on that machine while the other one is still producing traditional garments. Right. So you can see here, I can change my size around. I can do anything I want to there. Mm -hmm. um, come up here and tell it uh, the type of garment, the image, the print. You can pick it like color, but I don't print light color. I tell it I go to an F37 12 by 6 black shirt, light environment. It's ready to go. You just basically tell it to print and it'll, uh, it'll do that for you. So. Tell it the printer you want. Tell it okay, and it goes for it. So it's a very simple, easy rip to use. Um, and at the same time, it's wildly robust. I've touched on about 1% of what it has the ability to do. You can make lots of changes. You can change your number. If you wanted to, you have the option. At the same time, you have a lot of, of default settings. But it gives you the option to change all kinds of things on it. So. And I will get out of screen sharing if I can figure out how to do it. Here we go. OK, I think we're back to you, Jay. All right, we are. Looks good. Yes. And to those who are asking about the DTF webinar, that is definitely in the works in the very near future. We've done a lot of testing on that as well. Uh, and, and thanks to Jeff's leadership and the team in New Jersey, they've been behind the scenes cranking out some DTF samples. I love this angle, by the way, because now I can also see you standing between the, the printers and the dryer. Um, but uh, uh, so, Jeff, where do we go from here? So, so we, we, we went into Easy Rip Pro software. We saw the, you know, the automation or workflow tool and the barcoding. What would you say in a, in a traditional sense would be the next step? Well, I, you know, I think for anybody, it depends on your shop, but I think you have to look at, at what you want to do. Um, I think the barcoding is, is a great opportunity for anybody who's doing multiple machines. Um, it really needs, high, you know, high, high throughput. But I think the RIP could be perfect for anybody. I mean, even if you've got one of the smaller printers, it works extremely well. So Okay, so that's a, really, that's a really good point. And I, I don't know if we were clear on that. So this, this software could easily automate and you could have an F2100 sitting right next to an F3070 and power both. Absolutely. In fact, we can set it up so that you've got a separate license for each machine. You, in the showroom, we've got two 3070s, two 2100s that you can't see. They could all be set up on the same system. So I, I actually managed to get this uh, set up correctly after I got out of that. So if you don't mind, I'd like to just- Oh, no, no, it. absolutely. That's You're the star of the show, and this is what everyone's waiting for. So we've got that. Then we hit the shirt itself. Hit the print button. You can see how fast it loads because those, those files are pre-ripped. So we're not waiting for the file to rip. And, and there is the opportunity if you want to set it up in a fashion that it will pull it, rip it, put it through, but it's much slower. So my, my suggestion is always to have those files pre-ripped in the database and it, uh, it just makes it much quicker. It gives you a fast print, very easy to work with. And it, it minimizes the data in the, uh, in the database. I'm gonna go back to screen share here for just a minute. I, I've gotten befuddled by the problems I have. I want, to, uh, I want to show you the database and I want to show you how we create a barcode because I hear that so much. People go, okay, well, how do I get the barcode? No, exactly. You beat me to it. I was going to ask you if that was still something you could share with us, because I Absolutely. know that's part of the missing piece. But wow, that was fast. First of all, I'm still impressed. Fast, <laughs> fast. And, and one of the things you'll see here on this is that it's just got great vignettes. It fades out to nothing. There's no there's no stair stepping. It doesn't go, you know, five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent. It goes one, two, three, four, five. So you can see how smooth this transition is. And, and that's that's a result of the rip. I mean, it really has the ability to produce color. You can see this, the flesh tones and the variations in the flesh tones are just basically perfect. I mean, it just does an amazing job on that. That's an outstanding print. Uh, I'm beyond impressed. Obviously, I'm not just gushing because I'm a Equipment Zone uh, a <laughs> staff member. I'm a I'm a fanboy of the work and of the print. So good. And I mean, I can see the eyelashes. I can see the hair strands. I can see the the lighting and how difficult that is. And plus you have four different skin tones and it was able to right. nail all of them. And if you look at, at the way the cheeks fade out to, to black, that's very difficult to do. And it just does a great job on that. It's one of its real highlights is its ability to handle uh, fade outs and vignettes. Excellent work. So could you then go back to the workstation and then share with us how you would have prepared that barcode? 
Yes. But only okay. if I grab my glasses. Only if I take my glasses because I won't be able to. Yeah, take see. those with you. You got to have them. Okay, so I just need to minimize this so get back in. I don't have the file up. I don't think that I want to share. I have to open it. Can we minimize Jay a little bit to get to it? There we go. And share your screen so we can see that instead of the camera. Yep. Let me just get it open here. So and I will tell you that I often hit the wrong button because I'm I'm a PC or a Mac guy. And I <laughs> hey, no PC. excuses. Don't blame it on the PC. Come on now. I just I consistently hit the wrong buttons, but we'll go through and show you. So really this is our uh, oh you're right. I have to share the screen. How do I do that? Uh, share screen. We'll get you there. You're almost there. No, I want to do both things. So do this. Okay. Okay, so we've got two different things up here. So what we built here, this is our database that we're going to work from. And if you look at the way it's set up, um, so this is just put in the folder with your artwork, and this is the barcode ID. We've given it the name of the print, but again, that can be any identifier you want it to be. So this is your identifier. This is the printer family it's going to go through. We're doing the 3000 series, but it could be 2100 or the 2000 series as well. This is the file path. That's where this file is located here, which is actually in the same folder as the database. So that when I click the barcode, it automatically looks in this database, column A, and it sees Gecko. It says, okay, that's for the Epson 3000, and here's where it's located, and instantly loads that ripped file into the, uh, into the, uh, the printer. So it's very quick, this is easy. So all you do is you go into the rip like I showed you a minute ago, rip that file, save it, put it in the folder, Put the name here and boom, it finds it every time. So to create a barcode, we've done, there are a number of different ways to do it, but if you look here, I'm gonna highlight this. So that's the name. I'm gonna copy that, go back to, this is a special Excel database we built ourselves. And it's, I, I give Tim, our, our guy, a lot of credit for this. So basically the barcode is gonna be based upon that, that name that we had. So I'm gonna, Log it in and boom, we've got a barcode. It's ready to go. So you hit this. The barcodes aren't just type. There's some identifiers at the beginning and the end that tell it what to do and how to do it and where to do it, which are incredibly complex. So it's not just the typeface. There's other data in this code itself. So we just come to this, um, tell it to print. We can go to uh, page layout and we can say print area. So we'll set print area, which we're gonna tell it, okay. So that's, we've made this the print area. We go to file, we go to print, pops up, and where is it? Ready? We hit the print button. So, yeah, you, so you guys have a little barcode printer sitting right next to that, is that? We, yeah, can we pan in on that, Vanessa? And I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the uh, the screen share right now, so you can actually. Let me flip it around. Or yeah, sorry, we're ad libbing just a little bit here, guys. That's all right. So um, I'm gonna kill the screen share. Okay, and I'll come over here. The final. Final. File, print. We ready? We're zoomed in. We're ready. Don't blink. It goes quick. Okay, we won't blink. And it was fun to see Otis in the background in that shot. Well, <laughs> <laughs> literally, it spit it out. If you wanted several of them, you just tell it up front to print 20. And it's incredibly fast when it goes to print. So you can have a lot of them that way. So it's like it's on a little sticker roll, and then that's what you placed on the shirt, obviously, or the tote bag, yes. or whatever the substrate is. Tote bag, work order, wherever you'd like to put it. So, and that's really all there is to it. And it's it's really simple once you get used to it. You know, and once you, once you understand it, it, there's very minimal learning curve on the whole process. So, 
Well, that was pretty exciting. I mean, all things considered, Jeff, we had, uh, you know, some ad lib moments. We've had some great feedback. We've had some good questions. Let me ask one of the questions, because I think this is relevant to everything you said. Is this system only going to drive Epson based printers? What if I'm a shop and I have Epsons and I have brothers or something else? Well, unfortunately, it only, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, um, only works on the Epson-based systems. We only have drivers for Epson, um, and it wouldn't work with any other printer on the market. It will do both the 3070s and the 2100 series, and could do them in conjunction with one another, but that's it. There's no alternatives as far as other uh, brands or types of, uh, of printers. Gotcha. So investing in this technology, we want to make sure that people understand. Can you give us, again, it's a one plus two equation. You can just have the Easy Rip Pro software. And then if you have that, you could get the workflow and the barcode automation system. Can you give us a range or if you know a price that you want to share, what is the cost for the Easy Rip Pro software? Everyone's going to ask us and want to know that anyway. Can, if, you, if you don't know the exact price, can you give us a range? Is it under $5,000? Is it under $2,000? What is it? It's under $2,000 regardless. For the, uh, for the uh, 3070, it's, I think it's $1,800. And I think it's around 1,000 for the, the 2100. Um, I'd have to double check it, but that's really close. Um, different printers require different drivers and so forth. So the, the rips are a little bit different. Um, in the, the uh, barcode automation stuff, uh, system is set up on a uh, on a subscription service. You buy it annually, um, and we can go through that. It's going to be different for the different machines. So, okay. and it would be one, one license per machine, but it's it's not terribly expensive, and you know the return on investment's incredibly fast if you look at the value of it. And wouldn't that depend on how many machines I'm trying to automate, right? So that's one of the variables. Oh, absolutely, and, and that's the same with the rip. You know, it, it would be a separate license for each machine. Gotcha. Set them up. Okay. Well, that sounds like a really interesting. Uh, uh, I mean, I've got so many questions. I'm like, I'm like one of the you know, viewers. I'm just, my head's kind of still spinning. I'm trying to think of this. Okay. What can I ask Jeff? It only works with easy rip pro create specific barcodes. I understood that piece. Um, oh, a question. What if I don't have that little Epson printer that you had that prints on, is that included? Is that something separate? What would I do to actually print out my stickers on barcode? Well, we will certainly have that as an option. Um, it, with our package for the for the for the uh, workflow automation system, um, but there are other options. One thing that I that, that's nice about this one is it is an inkjet printer. There's there's a little less expensive ones that you can buy on Amazon or anyplace else, but they're thermal printers. And what I found was if I want to use that sticker for anything else, once it's gone down the down the dryer because the heat on a thermal printer, it's about the same color as this t-shirt. It's absolutely useless. It destroys the 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 code. Where this printer being inkjet, you can run it down and still use it after the fact. Or use it for other things or use it to track other information. Oh, okay. Want. That's so, smart. I didn't think, I didn't even think it's more expensive, that. but it's fast. And because it's inkjet, it holds up much better to the, you know, to the dryer. Gotcha. Well, Jeff, listen, we we've covered a lot of ground and I think it's been an outstanding webinar to give us some better vision to actually see this in, in progress. Um, we're really close to the finish line. For those of you that are watching, we, we've been asked about this and over and over and over again. So today was really a, a preview of the technology and, and to show proof of concept, proof of life that we actually have it. It's working and it's impressive. So Jeff, before we go, can you give us any summary points or anything that you want to make sure that we understand if there's a call to action, what should we do? What should we do next? Well, I think anybody who has certainly has multiple machines should look at workflow. And I, and I want you to understand that this is not still in the beta version. It's, it's not a test. We've got them operational. They work. It's actually really easy and it's almost foolproof. Um, and this is a product you'll be able to buy in the next couple of weeks. We will have it on the website and be able to go with it. So, um, you know, we're way past proof of concept. We're to a point that it's, you know, it is a fully functional automated product. Okay, that's outstanding. So for those of you who've had these comments, we appreciate the feedback. Thank you. And if there were parts or pieces that weren't clearly explained or you didn't quite get it, we easily can follow up with you and Jeff or others could give you a tour one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe that's a good call to action, Jeff, if there are the appropriate staff members to be able to show this process, if people are truly interested in trying to figure out how this works. Um, this session was recorded and you would be able to share that with coworkers if you needed somebody else to be watching this. Um, if you need to fast forward to the end to watch the barcode session, we won't be upset, but I do, I do think it's really important that you listen to Jeff from the beginning because of the points that were made and the experience that he has. 
Um, this guy has walked the walk. So this could be a game changer for your production and for your business. So Jeff, with that, I'm going to say thank you for all of the hard work and thanks to everybody in New Jersey who was able to pull this off. Um, and there's more to come. And so, uh, as I said, pay attention. But before I say goodbye, Jeff, should I know anything else? The only thing I want not you to know as much because you already know it, but for anybody else, if you have questions, I would love to talk about this stuff as well as anything about color theory, uh, about the systems. If you have any questions, my email is G-E-O-F-F, -F, Jeff. Again, it's G-E-O-F-F dot B at equipmentzone.com. So please send me an email. I would get right back to you and I, I'd be happy to chat about any of this information. Well, excellent. Let's end on that and let's make sure that people understand. First of all, we're grateful for their time about this, this concept of a true production pod, being able to see the workflow automation. There may have been some parts and pieces or some glitches or kinks that you didn't quite connect or couldn't connect the dots. Doing this with Jeff and seeing this, you know, maybe a virtual tour one-on-one -on -one would be, would be a, a recommendation I would make because it helped me see it. Um, and the other thing to remember is that this is our, our, our new workflow and this landing page will be up on our website and activated soon so that you can get additional information and see more in terms of, you know, what, what, it, what is involved, pricing, all of that frequently asked question type stuff. And also, uh, Jeff, thank you, your, your key contact info. So Terry Combs, Jeff Baxter, Amy Krulowitz, uh, of course, our, our regular um, website and information there. You can call us uh, to set up a time when you can do a virtual tour and maybe need uh, other staff or other decision makers to watch this and, and do it live. So we would encourage that to be your next step. If you have more questions, reach out to Jeff. He's our guide, Equipment Zone, who knows more about workflow automation and production pods than, <laughs> than most humans on the planet. I'll just say that. How about, is that fair to say? I, you know, I don't know if that's fair, but, you know, over time, and I've been at this a long time, you, you do acquire some information. <laughs> I think it's the longevity <laughs> that does it. Well, we appreciate it. Thanks for everybody who tuned in. And uh, from, from all of us at Equipment Zone, uh, we will see you on another webinar soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.